let's learn about a new chapter called contacts with distant land. So India, India is a very large country and it has a very long history of interaction with the other country. That means business, migration, movement from place to place, religion. There are different religions in the world, right? Through religion and through conquest. So through these things, there was lots of interaction with other countries from India. So first, let's see how is the interaction done through trade. So trade that means business was done between people of India and other countries. So who were those people? They were the people of Indus Valley civilization and Mesopotamia and the people who did trade between these countries were Tamilians and Greece and Rome and the countries of Southeast Asia. So the trade ended between Indus Valley civilization and Mesopotamia and also between the Tamilians and the Greece people. So Tamilians are mostly present in the southern part of the India and there was trade between these Tamil people and Greece, Rome and Southeastern Asian countries also. Now let's see interaction through migration from moving from place to place. So there were ancient Aryans, right? Aryans moved into India and then they had a lot of impact on the Indian society, culture and business etc. So Aryans were migrants to India. They were not basically from India. They have migrated from other places to India and then they had a lot of impact on the Indian society and the Indian culture. Now let's see how was the interaction or contact with distant lands through religion. So it has spread from India to many countries that is Central Asia, China, East Asia and Southeast Asia. So through Buddhism there was a contact with distant lands. Now let's see how was the contact through conquest. So Northwestern India was occupied by the tribal people. These tribal people came from Central Asia and the places of Central Asia are Sakas and Kushanas. So how was the contact with through trade, through different businesses? This contact was declined during the early Vedic period because people traded, that is people did business only between the local villages through a barter. But by 200 BC, there was a rise of towns and cities. That means the number of people increased, population increased and thereby many towns and cities was established. And then the India has re-established its trade contacts. After 200 BC, with the increase in number of towns and cities, there was re-establishment of trade contact with countries like China, Arab countries and Rome. And the southern part of India, the southern part of the India benefited from expanded contacts with many countries. The southern part of India has Arabian Sea, Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, right? So there was a lot of trade through these sea and water. And then there was also expansion of these contacts because there was a lot of transportation through water and then business was done, transportation goods was done through water. Per through water so there was lot of business done through in South India and then the business was mainly with the Western Asian countries, Southeast Asian countries and the Roman empires. To southern part of the India the traders had come from different parts of the country with the products they have produced so people from other parts of the India used to migrate to the southern part so that they can sell their products to different businessmen. And what were the foreign products that were imported into the southern part of the India? There were mainly horses and these horses were shipped from Arab lands. So the means of transport was via water, right? That is ships. So from the Arabic lands, horses were shipped and wine was bought from other countries. Silk was bought, ceramic, lead, glass gold as well as perfumes all these were imported from the other countries that is distant lands to southern part of the India. This is the trade map of India. These red lines show you the trade with different countries. So India is connected through trade to different parts of the world and this is the trade map of the India. Now let's see how did the India was in contact with the Greeks and the Roman people. Till now we have understood that southern part of the India had lot of trade. 
but the western part of the india the western coast of india which is having arabian sea that had lot of trade links that is business exchange with the greeks and the romans and then in the western coast of india we have a place called musiri which has port in it that is through ships the trade will be carried out so musiri was an important trading center the city called musiri was an important trading center in the western part of the india there was end of the roman empire after the 4th and 5th century there was end of the roman empire and then the trade links of the cholas and pandyas that is people of the india kingdoms of the india the cholas and pandyas was reduced with the west coast so after the end of roman empire the trade was little bit reduced so these western coastal people what did they import from these greek and roman people they imported tin lead gold glass copper and sweet wine so there was an important city called puducherry in india in that puducherry there is a port called arikamedu so this was an important center of trade with the roman people and then roman currency is also used to come to india so roman coins pottery and other articles were found at the places such as puhar kanchipuram and madurai so these are the roman coins children in this image you are see able to see so in this image students you see pottery pottery was also pots roman pots were imported to india via the southern part so this is the roman pottery later the remains of these pots were found in the tamil nadu region of india so next let's see how was the contact with the southeastern asian countries so india had a lot of developed trade system even with the southern eastern asian countries so the business exchange system was well developed so traders from the sri lanka sri lanka is situated below the india right so traders from the sri lanka they bought their goods to india and then there were roman and greek people right in india who used to come for trade exchange they used to sell their product to the greek and roman merchants so since lot of trade was carried out in the southern part of india the more number of people living there were tamilians so the places which were around the southern part of india but were not the part of india like sumatra islands java islands bali island even these people were turning more into this tamilian culture because the tamils introduced some of their culture into these places through trade so raja raja chola was great king of the southern part of india he allowed the construction of a vihara by the king of malaya at the tamil port of nagapatnam so there was a construction of a vihara by the malayala king at tamil port of nagapatnam and in this image you can see the raja raja chola who was a great king of the southern who was a great king of the southern part of india where a lot of trade exchange happened in his ruling now let's see what is the silk route so silk is mainly manufactured from china right It was started around 1st century bc by a chinese emperor and then this trade was established to reach the markets of different places in the world for example the markets of india and also the markets of the west and how did the name silk route come because silk important commodity traded so the fabric silk was an important thing which was traded all over the world so the route was named after the fabric silk so silk was covered around 700 bc before christ that silk was discovered many 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 years ago and this silk which was sourced from china this was of very great demand not only in any one specific part of the world but around the world and especially in the rome in the italy so this silk route had mainly two branches it is known as the northern route and the, so what was the northern route and the southern route let's see now so this southern route from the china marks up to northern india across khorasan and central asia and also mesopotamia up to the mediterranean sea so this is the southern route and what was the northern route the northern part of the china from there it started that is north of the tibetan plateau and it went up to russia and the black sea and then also up to the mediterranean sea this was the silk route so pilgrims monks buddhist monks traders business people soldiers 
all these people used this route which was used for silk trade so this is the silk route so it is even via the colder countries and these are people who are traveling carrying silk